Welcome to Ladies of Production Podcast, where we talk about animation and VFX production through the female lens. Have a listen to one of our old podcasts we're pulling out of our vault. I'm silly. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just a clown. Hi, everyone. No one is going to yell at us. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> You you you've uh you've reached another episode of Lip. Thank you for listening so far. We did hear that maybe there were two hundred downloads. Whoa. What? 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 Who is who are these people listening? We're so happy, we're so excited. Norn, it's um, not just a vanity project. People actually <laughs> wanna hear us talk. Yeah. Um which comes to today's episode. Um, so, and then there were three. Uh, <laughs> the other three members were too busy, quote unquote, to join us tonight. So, too we, cool. <laughs> too cool. They had they had plans during this quarantine somehow. Um, yeah, everybody's shaking their head. <laughs> <laughs> We're just like, I'm staying home. I'm a gremlin. <laughs> so, so I'm a today, home goblin. So tonight we're going to get to know um, our two youngest members. Youngest, oh, right? Well, of our... Becca's of a little our, younger than me. Okay, well, let's, Semantics. let's, let's yeah. pretend that you are the two youngest. Okay. And <laughs> we're getting to know the two youngest today. Savannah and Ray. Hi. Hi. <laughs> And so, um, I'm a very nosy person, so I'm going to ask the questions. Um, so my first question to you guys, and I'm trying to be mindful of the listeners, because I feel like a lot of our listeners are women who are trying to figure out what they're going to do with their lives, right? And so I wanted to ask you first, Savannah, what did you want to be when you grew up? Um, so... Like when you were 10 years old or something, like when you were very young. So I had, like, a very wide range of what I wanted to do. So at first, I wanted to be a lawyer, but then my dad told me how much reading I would have to do, and I didn't want to learn that much. I didn't didn't want to read that many books. I didn't want to learn that much. And then I wanted to be a veterinarian, and then my dad told me I would have to put a thermometer up an animal's butt, and that was over for me. Your Your dad is like a dream crusher. Oh my god. No, he was freaking trying to guide her towards film. That's what he was doing. He was manipulating me. Yeah. And then and then I wanted to be a cop, but then my dad what? said I would have to frisk Wait, why? Her. Why did you I, want I, to be a cop? I'm just curious. How old no, are I you? had like a power I don't know. I was like 9 or 10. I had like a power trip thing, I think, cuz all of these are like very weird jobs. It was like what what do you know what kids like what kids know what people I still don't know what normal people do besides like like lawyer and like doctor. Like what if, what is a job besides film? Industry? A lot of accountants. A lot of financial people. A lot of people. accountants. Um, but I wanted to be a cop. But then my dad said I would have to frisk houseless people, and I was like, I don't want to frisk houseless people. Jeez. So then I started realizing I liked stuff like what oh my dad God. did. I like doing all that stuff. And then my first big thing I wanted to do was be a director, like every young, aspiring filmmaker. How, how old were you at that point? like 11 or 12 but yeah I mean I've besides those like weird things that I wanted to do because I was really into history and like and stuff so I think that's where like the lawyer kind of stuff and I liked arguing with people so that was like another thing so I don't know just so this this was nine ten year old Savannah how, yes. how about how about you Ray like what did you want to be at that age well my, even younger my first job I ever wanted uh, when I was a little girl, have you ever been to Primo's Donuts on the west side? <laughs> no. Okay. It sounds amazing. It's a family-owned donut shop that's been around for maybe like 50 years, 50 plus years on Sautel and National. And we used to always go and you could, back in the day, you could walk in through the back where they were making all the donuts. And it was, you know, like the assembly line of donuts, things being you know, dipped and covered. Oh my god, that's and like a child's the, dream. And the ma, well, it was, she's kind of like a grandma who owned, who co-owned Primo's with her husband. She was the donut lady, and she was just so warm and welcoming and friendly. So I remember the first job I wanted was to be a donut lady, because... That's how, I want to be that now. Yeah! <sighs> um, so that was the first one, and then I think when I went to Take Your Daughter to Work Day... 
Um, I might have been, I was in elementary school. I might have been in like third, second or third grade. And at the time, my dad was working at Fox. So they were doing like a big take your kid to work day, you know, so cool setup thing where, That's yeah, awesome. where you get to pick certain um, activities you wanted to do and then spend the rest of the day with your parents in their office. Or basically, like, spend the rest of the day with their assistant, most likely, for most of the kids, <laughs> including me. Um, but on that tour, we got to see the costume department, the giant how, wardrobe. How old, how old were you? I think it was, like, third, second or third grade. So what like an amazing trip. Yeah. You know, it's crazy because I'm in, like, somewhat a film family, and I went to a private school briefly i went to crossroads where like oh gosh i was around a lot of like big hollywood people i remember that's where you can pick up a, a weed drug habit uh you can pick up some heavy <laughs> drug habits if you stayed yeah. at crossroads all the way through but yeah. i only did third fourth fifth grade there um and i actually Fancy. remember one of the field trips we went to a movie set that looked like space and when we were leaving, we all got to meet, you know, like one of the actors who was like dressed in a space suit. And then I found out later it was Bruce Willis. And I think it was like <laughs> Armageddon, oh, cool. maybe, or <gasps> one of those. Oh, wow. You went, you went to on a Mike Bay set when you were a kid? I went to a Michael Bay premiere when I was a teenager. Remember that movie, wow. The Island, that came out? It was like yeah, that weird. Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, so they had a premiere, an LA, a tiny LA premiere in Westwood. And since my dad worked on it, he was like, uh, do you and a friend oh, want to wow. come and see this? So we just like went cool. in our freaking Hollister tank tops, not realizing uh. it was a premiere. We thought it was a screening. <laughs> and I remember my dad was like, okay, we should leave now before the crowd leaves. So we left like, you know, a little early and we bumped into this man. And I remember he was wearing kind of like a baggy white suit. And my dad was like, oh, wait, hey, um, Ray, uh, I, want you, I want you to meet the, the director of the movie. And I was like, hi. You met Michael Bay? And it was Michael That's Bay. You... Yeah. And oh he was just God. going to the wow. bathroom before the end of the movie, before he has to talk and do all of that. So just in passing. Because my dad, like, had worked with him and knew him. Um, yeah. So they were, like, friends. It was so, not have... so, yeah. But I, I was just like, oh. You know, like, all these weird celebrity, I... somewhat celebrity or high-powered people uh, brush by. So, anyway. Well, I... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I want to ask you another question, but um, but I have my own Michael Bay story after you Did Tell it. it. Tell it. I'll oh. finish my story later. <laughs> so I went to Art Center, mm -hmm. and he actually came to speak to, at my school because he went to Art Center as well. And I he wasn't famous back then. He was just a commercial director. He had directed the commercials for Got Milk. You probably don't mm. remember those. Mm -hmm. or maybe I do. Like, mustache ones. Yes, they were huge. They were huge, and um, so he he was an example of a he was a film student, and he had collaborated with the advertising students. So it was like a, an example of how they collaborated together on these milk spots. And I remember every commercial he showed on his reel just showed what a sexist jerk he was. And I just remember <laughs> like what a douchebag. Like that was like. Maybe he had directed a movie at that point, and he came back as like some kind of prodigal son or something. Um, but anyways, not that much has first, changed. My first impression of Michael Bay. Hey, back uh, then, Norn, did you have any idea that you would be directing commercials like you have? Mm -mm. No, because like no clue. Did you have any interest when you were like talking to or listening to yeah. him and watching? But you just were kind of like. That's not going to be me or what? I I thought I was such an introvert that it was never going to happen for me. Mm -hmm. And um, but I definitely wanted to be a director. Um, I was such a huge movie nerd. I still am. And, um, you know, back then it was kind of the rise of indie films. Um, mm -hmm. And so I just loved, you know, Quentin Tarantino, <laughs> you know, like Steven mm -hmm, Soderbergh, yeah. like all those big. And it was just, you know, really exciting time for filmmaking mm -hmm. but I just thought you know it's never gonna happen for me because I could never tell anybody what to do oh my and, god no. and look at me now I all know I'm great at it. <laughs> so great at it. Yeah. I, have to, I have to say if if you are a young girl listening right now and you think you're an introvert it's not things change yeah things absolutely change and you have it within you to direct other people 
for sure. Well, it's All, also like you don't need to not be you don't need to be an extrovert to do those jobs. Like so many of in animation, mm-hmm. a lot of people are. I say, I would say most people in animation are some sort of introvert or omnivert. But I feel like it. In every girl listening out there is a boss. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. All of you are bosses. Um, you might feel like an introvert now, but things will change as your confidence grows, as you get good at your craft. And you stop giving a fuck. Exactly. Wait, so, um, but Savannah, weren't you, like, little misdirector with your friends, be- like, making movies com- when you were... Was it comedy? Oh yeah, yeah. I, love, I I love comedy. It's like my favorite thing. That's why. You, I love it too, Savannah. Can we do a sketch one day? <gasps> and I did improv. Oh yeah, I would love do that. Yeah, I would love to do oh, that. God. I really need to figure out how to get my DV tapes of like what I did when I was a kid. You should on like digital because they're they're so so bad. So so bad. But, like, I was, like, so I'm, learning. I'm, I'm an introvert, but, like, when I'm with people that I'm comfortable with, I don't shut up, so you can't, like, get rid of me. Um, so with my friends, I was totally fine, but if you put me, like, in a classroom, like, I'm not going to say shit unless I know people. So that's um, how you were able to be a director while you were an introvert, while you were younger. Yeah, and you... I mean, I think a lot of people, it's just, like, they get comfortable, but also I think as a director, there's a certain amount of, like, or as, like, someone who's, like, in production, like, for me, like, if I'm a producer, like, because I just recently started a new job where I'm working from home and I'm a production supervisor, but there's some sort of, like, with that role, you have some respect from people. So it's In not like I'm trying to prove myself mm. and having to be introverted. It's like I have to I have to fake that I'm extroverted and mm. fake that I'm social, but I don't have to worry about needing to prove myself because I know that I'm good at my job. You already, have the, t- you already have the title. Yeah, I have the title. Mm-hmm. I, I'm new. Nobody knows me. They don't know if what I've messed up uh, when I was figuring my, like, stuff out. Like, they didn't all know those, it was like, a PA. PA coordinator mistakes are gone because mm-hmm. nobody knows you, and you start fresh, and you have, like, this title, and because you're new, people are, like, kind of intrigued by you and, like, kind of want to read, like, know what you're doing and stuff, so I use that for my advantage right now. Well, that, mm-hmm. That's... That's the other thing, like, young listeners listening out there. There's this thing called fake it till you make it. I think we should say all listeners. Because everyone can can gain from this. You're right. You're right. Um, And I definitely faked being a boss for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was faking being an extrovert. And then somehow I became an extrovert. It's this weird thing that happens over time. You don't think you're going to change. And then you do. It's... It's weird. It's kind of like um, when you're pretending to sleep and then you actually fall asleep. <laughs> you know, you're just like, it just happens. And then it just kind of, you know, eases into that. But um, well, the, other, the other thing I want to ask you oh, two. Can I finish? Sure, sure, sure. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Before so, we move on to the next question. Okay. So, um, so I went to this great take your daughter to work day. And I wanted to do costume design. Like, I thought, like, oh, I want to be a costume designer. And my my dad, like Savannah's, was like, costume design, just so you know, it is more competitive than fashion because there are fewer people who are doing it at the highest level. Yeah. Like, if you think about it, like, costume designers for film, mm -hmm, there's, like, far fewer of them than fashion designers. And you you have to be amazing. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of like, I feel like one of those where it, to me, I was like, you know, I don't want to hate clothes by making it work. You know, like, I feel like that's kind of also why I'm just like, never really been a person who wanted to draw or use any of my art for work. Because I was always like, I feel like it'll just kill the fun of it for me. And Mm -hmm. I don't think I have the confidence yet. Or at all for that stuff. That's like my personal whatever. Yeah, I don't know how artists take criticism because yeah. I can't take any. You criticism. have to have a really thick skin. You gotta. My th- skin is made of paper. I know <laughs> all of us wet. are. All of us like I have to tell you, as an artist, you get your heart broken every day. Mm-hmm. Does that sound terrible? <laughs> yeah, and it's horrible, and I feel. Bad. I couldn't and that's do why it. I don't like it's true because it's yeah. horrible. Do you it's see true. the light slowly fading from people's well, eyes? I feel like somebody told, I was like, how do you deal with this? Somebody told me that they were dead inside and that's how they oh, dealt no. with it. And I was like, I can't be dead inside because I have to be passionate 
to and, do and the work. Up, yeah. To do the work. Like I, I mean, I'll, I could try to not care, but it's hard to not care. Although people say you are not your work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So your it's like, it's, if work, it's a criticism your of your work, it's not a criticism of you. That's right. I think Maya Angelou had some quote that was going on on Instagram for a long time. Like, you are not your work. Um, your real life is here with your family. Mm. That's what um, my dad used to always say about, like, he'd, he'd say when he came home, he felt like that was real life and work was, like, just the rest parents. of the day. You know? Yeah, they're best parents. They're pretty great. Um, so- so you want to be a costume designer? Anything he, else? Um, basically, after that, I just had no idea what I wanted to do. I didn't really think, you know, I was like, I. You were living in the moment. I feel and, like, like you were enjoying your time. I mean, I'm still that like great. that. It was just more like I haven't. I mean, and this is what I say every time someone asks me, like, what do you want to do next? Like, how can we help you? What can we do to get you? You know, do you want to be an art director? Do you want to be a producer? And part of me is just like, I haven't seen a position that I want. Like, maybe it's not in film production. That was something I was thinking when I met all of you guys. Like, maybe there's, like, a different role for me at, like, a, at a, um, a company rather than doing being a freelancer. Like, maybe there is, like, yeah. a higher position that, you know, I can grow with somewhere else. But I just haven't yeah. seen it yet. And, like, that was the thing where I'm like... Um, the people, the jobs that I see in production now, I'm like, I like what I do. I like my place. And it was funny, even just this year when someone asked me, like, by the way, we didn't even talk about your future. Like, what what do you want to do next? And I was like, I'm kind of fine with this right now and t- until I see the next thing. So it's weird. I've, I've been, it's weird. I'm like a very driven, academic, high achieving person, but I've kind of been without, you know, a goal of what I want to do or pursue, you know, like I remember meeting Savannah or I just kind of felt like talking to you, you seemed like you knew you wanted to be a producer, like just around the lunch table. Like you kind of knew that was your goal. That's what you're working towards. And like, I'm just, you know, like I admire everyone who has those goals. Cause for me, I'm just like, I kind of fell into what I'm doing because it just was like a natural fit, like a natural move. And um, I've gotten really good at the job and, you know, in demand or whatever. But there isn't like a next step for this unless I take on Mariel's idea of like being like a supervisor <laughs> of multiple asset managers, which I don't even know if I want to do. You know, like there, that's like, I don't know. It turns into like, you know, managing people and being responsible for their, you know, like so. That's the thing. It's like, I just don't see the neck, like, what I want to do. And part yeah. of me also, I, mean, I think I even said this to you, Norn, because you were the one who first made me realize, like, I do want to have kids one day. Because you had asked me, and I was, like, 28 or 29, and I was like, oh, my God, I actually have to have a serious answer for this now because I'm getting older. That's a job. That's and, a job. And, yeah, so part of me was thinking, like, you know, maybe I'm also not finding a job or a career because I really want to be a mom, a stay-at-home mom. Or yeah. part-time just, mom, like, work part-time and be able to be a parent and put my focus on, on that part of my life. the nicest job you will ever have, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my, I um, have a mom friend who's, like, a super mom, and she does, like, I am the opposite of a super mom, and oh. she does everything. Like, she's the classroom mom. She, like, she, like does... Pinterest lunch. <laughs> yeah, everything like and I'm like the opposite, right? And but she takes so much joy in what she does. I mean, she needs she needs time off and all that stuff, but it, it is a job. It's a really um it's a, a lovely commitment it, job. I mean, it's that's a lovely job. That's something I've thought about too, like especially early in my career when I was kind of like uh the babysitter of the department or you know like taking care of all of the artists needs you know getting making sure their food is right making sure this and that part of me was like i'm getting paid to take care of these men but you know <laughs> like women. it's different if i were taking care of my family you know like i know yeah, i'm not yeah. getting paid but there is like i do have this natural nurturing ability and what you know and a want to do that or like you know how we're all like caregivers or whatever yeah. and it's like maybe 
Maybe that energy no. should be put towards. <laughs> uh, maybe that energy should be put towards you know people I want to be around instead of people I'm being paid people to be around. People you are paid to be that's, around. I feel like that's why women make such. I mean, I hate to generalize, but why women make good producers <laughs> because they're used to babysitting and mm-hmm. caring. You have the touch of empathy mm-hmm. that yeah. and caring that people crave in times of crisis, which comes up way too often mm-hmm. in projects. Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, my next question is, um, I've, I've, you know, you guys both grew up in the industry. You guys both have these amazing dads. <laughs> I'm actually curious, um, I'll ask you first, Savannah, when did you first realize what your dad did? <laughs> because it, it is kind of like a, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's not like a doctor or a lawyer where it's like they teach you that in school. Yeah, well, um, I mean, my dad... Like, well, how old were you when you realized? Tell us the moment. I don't know. I mean, what was cool was when my dad, when I was young, my dad worked at Disney. So he, they were, we would go to like, bring your kid to work day, which I just remember, I forgot, ever since we've been in quarantine, my memory has been horrid. So I don't like remember existing pre-quarantine for some, it's like a personal All of us, all of us. But, um, so we, we would go to like, the premieres bring your kid to work day like disney was great when you had kids because you would go to disneyland like we would go to disneyland all the time because he had passes did you brag about your dad to your friends i don't think so (laughs) hey i'm not like that kind of person i don't think (laughs) i don't remember doing it i don't it also just felt like so like well my dad does this and i don't like like, i don't know well that's like an la thing too growing up here it's like there are kids who lead with like what their family does, you know, or at least like yeah. you know, at Crossroads, where it's like you know oh, what the Crossroads, family does. Crossroads, everybody was like famous and the celebrity. Yeah. Um. Um. Sorry. But well, so how old were you when you realized what he actually really did? I think I must have been like eight or nine because when I went to like Disney, they had the Bring Your Kid to Work Day, and then they would, like took you into like this room and you got to like animate it. I think it was like animating a character Whoa. but then you put you in front of a computer and you're like amazing. drawing Mickey Mouse and you're just like oh this is cool and then my dad my dad used child labor he would make me cut his um his reels because he didn't he's like you want to edit here use the computer and make my reel for me so I would cut wow. my dad's reel so he could get jobs um oh my god <laughs> that's amazing yeah. in premiere no, like, uh, I don't Final Pro? Know. I don't know what we had. It must have been something horrible old. It, this was when I was, like, in like, maybe it was Final Cut. Was this, like, the know. early aughts or something? Yeah, it was, like, I must have been, like, 10 or 12 when I was helping him cut reels. Um, I don't even know. So oh my cut God. his reel for him. And, like, he would show me, like, this, because he would get his, you know, his footage from the movie on the VHS because they still did that. Oh, my gosh. And he would, like, show me, like, oh, this is, like, what they did. And, like, he would show me, like, the the spins of, like, the transformation process of the stuff. And, like, he would show, he would go to the movies and be like, I worked on that shot. So, I'm, like, I kind of knew what he did. Um, do I know what he does now? No idea. <laughs> you know. It's, it's you know changing. now. I really don't because it changes all the time. He's a compositor. He's, he's a compositor, right, for the most part? No, I don't no. think so. Oh, <laughs> I really don't know. Because he does, like, he was, like, the guy, like, he started, he was one of the first people, you know? So he... He did he everything. He does a little bit of everything, because you had to. Because um, I know when he was at Disney, he was in lighting. And then when he worked at Di- Digital Domain, he was in comp and tracking and match move. But now he worked at the third, he was working at the third floor, and I don't know what he was doing there. That's like, layout. Now he's working on a Marvel movie. Which one? He was saying he was working on Marvel. Which which movie? Remember. Or can you say? I don't remember. I can't remember anything. I'm going crazy. <laughs> so Ram, uh, what, what, how old were you when you realized what your dad did? And... So, I mean, well, actually, I want to talk about my mom first because she's an animator oh. and like kind of like um, Savannah's experience at Disney. We used to always go to my mom's animation studio and could oh. see all of the. Was it Duck Soup? Yeah. Duck Studios. Oh, I, I, I've worked with Duck Studios. Yeah, that. I mean, they're gone now. Most of my furniture is from their office. Uh, That's ooh. why you have such cute furniture. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But um, so I always knew what she did because her work was commercials, like 
um, Polly Pocket, stuff that you could point on TV and be like, my mom animated that, and I saw, you know, and she was a hand animator. We should, we should have your mom on this podcast. We should. She's been listening. She thinks we're oh great. We, she thinks we're awesome, and she loves all of the graphics, as does everyone, Norn. But um, <laughs> she, so like you know you, um, you could actually just see how she would just draw from sheet to sheet. And, Amazing. Does um, she still have all that stuff? She, I think we still have one, or she still has one table, like one animating table, but it's not all set up. Because I think later on, because it was just, you know, take up so much space, she would just have like a light box and just be at the kitchen table and just do it that way. Um, mm. and That's so, so cool. So yeah, so I could always explain what my mom did. It was like animation commercials there's even like a t- show called edith ann that she animated um it was like a lily tomlin just a, a kind of funny How strange cool. I, awesome. I, lo- I love lily tomlin i do too uh big business have you guys seen that movie that was one of my favorite movies growing oh, up with um with bet midler bet midler yes i haven't seen that should i watch that oh my god yes it's so funny it's like i remember when i had a i think my 10th birthday it was a slumber party and i made all the girls watch it like no one got it but i oh it's just one of my i think my grandma must have played it for me like one of the vhs's at her house so my mom could always explain animator my dad like for the majority, probably not until I started working, did I actually know what he did. It was always like, right. he works in film and, you know, I think around Titanic time. So however, I was like nine or ten when that came out. That would be like, oh, yeah, my dad like works with the people that erases the the lines, uh, like that erases the ropes that are uh, on the people falling off the deck. You know, like, that's how you could explain. That's how you explain. Like, my dad does that, you know. And before that, he did. He worked in titles. He worked at Pacific Title. What? I I uh wanted to do that. Titles? Oh, can you hear me? You're kind of slowing and glitching. Okay, you're good. Pacific Title is a historic, you know. Aren't they gone now, too? Yeah, it's because it's opticals. Well, now they're, like, um, I know that they started a, like, a storage archival storage thing but um i, I didn't know he was entitled yeah he sta- he you, did i'll huh? bet you he knew my teacher wayne F- can you ask him if he knows wayne fitzgerald sure he probably does wayne because he because w- he was like the the main title designer in this i don't know 70s 80s but he was my instructor at school i think my dad was there like 80s 90s before he, he started wayne fitzgerald. probably um so, so yeah, like, at first I could describe, like, oh, yeah, like, it's the titles, that that's what he does. Um, even though he's not designing it, he was, like, you know, like, the was producer, he, basically. Was he the, oh, he wasn't, like, the engineer? He was the no, producer. he was, like, he was always been, like, the post-supervisor, VFX supervisor. supervisor kind of a thing. You know, right. like, one of those vague kind of... I don't like kind of like Savannah, like keeps everything moving. In charge of everything. Yeah. Yeah, Like he even told me back in the Titanic days, he, they would tape reviews. um, Like they'd video record reviews um, with like the, with a vendor. And then someone would drive that over to Jim Cameron's house to watch it to like, (laughs) and then some, and then he'd record his feedback and that would get like driven back. And it's like oh my, my dad was like, you know, kind of coordinating those things in the community, like knowing all of the heads of the vendors and stuff. And it's really cool because yeah. I actually got to work with one of the guys my dad worked with on like Terminator 2, I think. Oh, and the best Terminator, right? T- uh, Terminator 1 or T2. They're both good. Um, the th- first two. Everybody say T2 is the best. People love T2, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, so for a while it was just like, yeah, he does, like, kind of visual effects, kind of post whatever that means. And then it wasn't a, until... And so you just post, say... That. He's a post VFX supervisor. Yeah. Right? But he used to... His title... You'll love this, Norn. He used to make his title post effects guy, P-E-G, and my mom's name is Peggy. Oh, no. So he did it, like, a little <laughs> homage to her. But that's, that's also so why... 
none of us knew what he did. We were like, he's a post effects guy. Uh, he's a peg. He's a, he's peg. a peg. No, you don't. I'm not going to say that. Don't say that. <laughs> don't not not say, say that, that. Norm. By the way, that's a very sexual term. I only learned about that. <laughs> For all the children's listening. Like in the last year of us. Broad City. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> but um, so yeah. And, don't and look then, it up. Like, don't look it up. Don't look it up. Look you it don't up. know. Don't look it up. Ah. Oh! Um. So back to my father, and uh, <laughs> so yeah. So I never knew. I never really knew what he did, and um, it wasn't until like starting to work in the industry did I actually gain some like more respect because before it's just like oh silly dad oh he's just my dad like. But then, you know, oh. you start meeting people who are like, oh, my God, your dad's the greatest. Oh, we love Rob. Love He's your, been around I, forever. We I call him Yoda. He's like the Buddha, blah, 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 blah. Like all these things, <laughs> how he's like so chill and zen and... And also, it's funny, like, we all see him as this quiet person, and then at work, he's, like, really talkative and laughs really loud. He's, like, a different a different person. It's his work yeah. self. They get weird. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. So, how... That leads me to my next question. Which is, how would you describe how you are at work and how you are at home, and what's the difference? Um, you go first, Savannah. Um, I feel like I'm the same person at both places. I am just, I just watch what I say more at work. So you're a bit more tentative at work. Whereas- I, just, I don't think it's tentative. I just don't say what I'm thinking. Well, when you're at home, you just let loose. I, it's, it's chaos. <laughs> it's absolute madness in my home. Like, I don't not, know. like no editing. No, uh, my partner and I are both very, we don't have a filter with each other. Which is why um, you work. Yeah, but it gets a little crazy sometimes because we're both like very <laughs> feisty people who get angry really fast, but then we also like stop caring after like five minutes so it's just weird but like I don't know at work like I don't really like I'll say what I'm not gonna I don't I'm direct but I'm not gonna be like you're being an asshole which I would say that at home (laughs) oh but you're a lot more honest yeah but I mean I still like I'm always I pride myself in being direct because I feel like I get a lot more out of people when I'm direct and not I agree. Beating around the bush. Um, Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I still, I'm going to still be my loud, happy-ish, kind of, like, I don't know, nihilistic self. Um, And I will do that at home. But I will just be, like, I mean, at home it's just me and my partner. Louder. Louder. But at home it's just me and my partner, so I don't really have to, like, not say what I want to. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that you don't tell me I'm an asshole. (laughs) But you're not an asshole. But if you were, I would probably, like, figure out, like, hey, dude, can you, like, knock it off, please? Can you, like, like, tone it down a notch? Tone it down. Or Um, I'll just shut up and take it because I'm not confrontational. Um, At work. At work. Oh. Well, it's just, like, it's like that thing, like, if you're my friend and you're being a dick, I'm going to tell you you're being a dick. Like, like if if somebody has something in their nose, you're going to tell them. Yeah, I will. I will tell anybody. <laughs> um, I will literally tell anybody, hey, you have gunk on your face. Even if it's, like, a director or, like, somebody I don't know, I will tell you. You're doing like, a favor. Yeah, they'd rather know. Yeah, I mean, I would want someone to know if there was something weird on my face. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I just, I don't think there's much of a notable difference. Um, um, I can I can say um, I've seen Ray at work, and I know her personally. And um, I do remember Ray being, and we've said this so many times, Ray is so cheerful and just such a happy person at work and, you know, in real life, not really that way necessarily, but definitely a sunny personality in general, but there's definitely a dark side. I was totally going to say that. I was going to say, I like, we could use exactly the Norn's first impression of me to say how I am at work. work. That's how I am at work. I'm very I'm, Wait, say I'm that again. on. Oh, uh, that's how like I am how, at work. How, how, che- how cheerful are you? Yeah. So basically <laughs> when I'm at work, I am like on, like, it's like, I am a hundred percent there. I, I have like tried to have a response, a funny response to everything, trying to keep things light for the whole department, but also like 
being very sociable, you know, like just helpful, helpful, like yeah, offering to help people do things, just being kind of like very active, I guess, and very like um, welcome wagon kind of like, and it's just so yeah. funny because this is, I mean, it's also what I do when I'm new somewhere, like trying to like somewhat get the feel of the place is like, I'd rather be friendly and like bubbly and whatever. And I actually, I, I feel like it's exhausting for you. Is yeah. that my impression? Well, is it just depends, impression? you know, like it depends on the people I'm around where it's like, if I like the people, then it's easy to be like that. You know, I want to be yeah. like that. My mom even, cause like, you know, just like you said, like my dark grumpy side, like that's yeah, what usually like it. you've seen it. My family sees it. Your Nathan's mom seen sees it, it a little. Most. My mom sees it the most. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and she had kind of asked me like, are you like this with your friends? Are you like this at work? And I'm like no honestly like I I am so controlled and so like you know I I don't really let any well okay unless it's like a big like I just can't deal with this anymore I just tried like to for the most part not to let any anything bring me down while I'm there I feel like I'm kind of people take their moms for granted too um, I mean, not that, I mean, you probably do a little bit, yeah. but I mean, to me, it's like you kind of, you feel like you're able to show your real self because you trust her so much. Yeah. Um, right? Yeah. Totally. And I think that's partly why also like at work you do kind of, or at least it's like I keep this superficial level because I don't really know everyone and how they're going to react or it's how. It's almost like a, a armor, I feel like for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, and I feel like it kind of comes to, like, the service part of my job, where, like, part of me feels like, yeah, like, it, it kind of, kind of, like, it's your shield. Yeah. Yeah, like, it makes me feel like I start on a good impression, and it makes me feel like people will be more willing to help me and do things if I'm, like, this nice, overly whatever person. Yeah. Um. But I well, do you're also remember like new a lot, right? You're I, always well, like, like you're we're not always you're always a new you're always a new kid. Well, there's we're it, the department is always new. Like it's always a new mixture of people every job yeah. I get. So it's always kind of that little like we're always kind of feeling each other out. Everyone's kind of like I mean, some of us might know each other from a previous show, but that'll be like only one connect connection out of like 15, 20 people. Yeah. So okay. like yeah, it is like a lot of like Every time you start a new job, it's, like, all new, new people, all new yeah. dynamic, and, um... Yeah, but I think that that's a little... I mean, I say... I will say that I will act more bubbly and outgoing when I first start a job, mm-hmm. but that's only for That's a, a cover. That's, like, not you at all. Yeah, but, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm she's so a little kitten. Grump. She's a little um, kitten. <laughs> But like, I mean, I've worked at my current job for almost eight months, and I will probably I will be there at least till like twenty twenty three, so like two more years. So like, I don't think. But in that time, Ray, you might have had like five. Right. Yeah. Jobs. Whereas like I've settled in with these people. They know me. They mm-hmm. know how I operate. I know how they that's, operate, so I don't have to be somebody film, I'm not. That's the film. Because it's like right? hard. The, I don't know. It like when you're in production. I guess when you you're know? in post production, you can settle in a little bit more. Yeah, definitely, because um, you're usually on for at least like a year, or you're in like a, like a job, like a oh yeah, or like you're, you work for job. a studio that yeah consistently gives you work. But um, I mean, part of what like I like this aspect of my job, but I'm always meeting new people, and I feel like that's what kind of I like it because like we were just talking about this um about being kind of a growing mind where it's like, yeah, I mm-hmm. always want to learn more from everyone around me. So I always want to have as many new smart people, but it's funny. Cause you know, when we were all working together at our office, that's like the first time I really saw people from work who did stuff socially together outside of work. Cause a lot mm-hmm. of the people I worked with were married with kids or, you know, the job you're just so exhausted after nobody really wants to see each other, even though we're yeah. like great in the office. But seeing the the dynamic at our old company and being like oh like people actually make lasting friendships at work well also you guys were younger a little younger yeah i want to say so like a lot of you were single well it was very high school feeling there but also i was gonna say like 
I, you know, I only have had like maybe one friend, one or two friends that I've stayed really close with from each show where we'll like still text and keep up. But like, this is the first time I've had like a group that has survived from a, you know, like where we all became friends as a group at work. And it was funny right around the time I met you guys was when my friend was working at CBS and she made this new girl group. And she was like, I hang out with my work friends more than anyone else. Like we go out together. It's just like a dip, like we're all kind of in the same place. So that's something like, I'm really grateful for this group because I remember when I was leaving that job, I was like, it's so weird because I feel like I always make friends, but I just don't, you know, it's like, I'm just collecting all these friends, but it's only while we work together. It's like Pokemon. (laughs) Yeah. I just catch them all, but then (laughs) you just have like your work friends or not even maybe like work at, work um i don't know it's like those high school friends that you had that once you went away you kind of were just like i grew well, we had good time i grew out of all my high school friends i have i still have a couple two two and one of them uh she was saying how proud she was of us for our oh, podcast she loves it you so know, i shouldn't say i grew out of my high school friends although they're probably not listening anyway so who cares well you grew it. apart too because <laughs> yeah, it's like proximity they have nothing, in, co- high they have nothing in common that's also like yeah. I remember my college dorm friends like they were it was all based on proximity and then like yes. you know same most as friendships college are, your friends you're friends with still probably. most friendships are based on proximity and convenience um, yeah which is why the pandemic is such a good test of who is actually your friend well now like proximity doesn't matter because you could just zoom everybody mm-hmm. so yeah. we don't have to physically see each other um but. The other thing I oh the other thing I wanted to say was about what Ray's tactic was, which is something I don't know if 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 you would use this to describe it, but have you heard of killing people with kindness? Mm-hmm. Yes. So I feel like there's some of that, a little bit too, and maybe how you work, or maybe I, I don't know. Is that I think, or does that sound too manipulative? Um. I mean, I guess you could say, okay, this is something I I just learned from one of my early mentors is like, you don't have to be mean to get things done. You, you, you can be nice and still be effective. You get get more honey from bees. You you get more flies with honey than vinegar. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, And like more honey than vinegar. (laughs) Um, That's right. And, you you know, poop. (laughs) Ugh. So you get more from with honey than vinegar. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, she told me this because she's like, I'm not a yeller. I'm not a screamer. That's just no. not my tactic. And I'm like, yeah, neither Nobody am I. And, that. and I feel like, um, you know, there's a lot of people who, who just scream and like, that's their mode. And that's what they think makes them an authority and makes them, you know, powerful. But for me, I'm just like, I think you can get so much more work done by being nice and like absolutely courteous. And I feel like also it takes like a little more effort, but for me, like, you know, like put a little bit more effort in making my emails softer when they need to be softer or, you know, changing the tone of my voice or taking deep breaths or doing anything like that to kind of um, be like a flight attendant, you know, just like at your service is I feel like is just part of like something that strengthens me because there are people that have like no none of this bedside manner and like they can't get things done as well, I yeah. feel. Well, nobody wants to help them. Yeah. Agree. Like, yeah. I've had people who act like that, and I just, like, I am I will help anybody, even if you're a giant poopy head. But if you're going to be, a, like, mean, like, to me, not about, like, just, there's, like, there's asshole, and then there's asshole to someone. And if you're going to be an asshole to someone, and you ask, expect me to do my best for you, it's not going to happen. Yeah. I think um, it all comes down to empathy, like, what would you want to hear? I think that's if probably, you, you know, like, I feel like that's more me than like killing with kindness where it's like, I am so sensitive that I want to be sensitive to everyone else. Cause like I've had people scream at me on the phone over nothing and I would just start crying after. And you know, my department heads would be like, do we need to talk to someone? Do we need to get involved? And I'd just be like, no, 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 no. It's just like, it's okay. I just, I've never been talked to like that. And They're like, just bad yeah. managers. and that just makes me think I never want to make someone feel like this, you know, like, so I, I just 
yeah, I'd rather, well, and I guess too, like this is kind of an unfair generalization about artists and creatives, mm-hmm. but it's like, you know, they are more temperamental and sensitive sometimes it's true. for the most, it's like true. you have to be to do your work. You have to feel it's and just everything. More passionate. Yeah. More passionate. more passionate. So it's kind of and like, you get shitted on a lot. We get like shit, we were mentioning we get earlier. Sh- we get shit yeah. all the time. And that's why it's kind of like, yeah, like having that empathy for the people that I'm, wor- like being in the art department, the people I'm working with, where it's like, Is it even these empathy are- though, or is it just like respect? Like you're respecting other people it's, that are human both. beings. It's both, you know? Yeah. yeah I, I, just, I don't think that people who yell are respecting anybody. Agreed. No. Like they're, they're very, very self- disrespectful. Well, they're being egotistical. For the most part, they don't. Else. They don't respect themselves, and they don't think anyone respects them. That's why they scream. They think that's what it needs to be heard. So, yeah, I just feel like um, I also think, like, I think just because I, I do gain energy being around people, it does. it is kind of easy for me to be, like, lively and awake and on. And it's also, like, it's only when I'm at the office. And when I go home, I can just be quiet and do just zone out and watch TV or just – not half I think maybe that's why like ever since I started living alone it's like I can have this introverted downtime so when I'm at work I can just expel all of this energy because I remember when I was living with my parents for like a year while I was working on Bumblebee like I would come home and I would just be like I don't want to talk just close the door I don't want to yeah I don't want to interact with anyone be like how was your day and you're like please I'm like I can't (laughs) I can't answer I can't talk um because yeah I'm putting all my Huh? Grumpy. Yeah. I was like, I'm which, grumpy. Please leave me alone. Which, you know, most people at work would never imagine me being, you know, but that's... I've seen it. You've I've seen, seen it. it. I let it I let it out now and then. Uh, and it's not pretty. So that's why it's like, I feel I like... I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's human. It's natural. Yeah. It's human. Um, um. But yeah, I do think I'm very different in that way. Like, but I feel like, um, I feel like my off time yeah it's just different now because i guess we're just not around people as much beyond you know so because yeah. we're talking about it being different now we're talking about how this podcast is a bit of a time capsule because we are all still in quarantine mm-hmm. and um it is march now it's been a year mm-hmm. and no. yeah <laughs> with our new president i feel like we've turned a corner everybody mm-hmm. has more optimism now um So I wanted to ask you guys, you two, um, what a a non-work related question. um, What are you excited about once we kind of um, transition out of quarantine? I don't know that we'll ever get back to normal life, um, but what are you each excited about? Um, And I know restaurants are opening um, inside next week. Um, Savannah, let's go with you first. Um, so I will say that even though the world is opening, I will be staying at home until I am <laughs> yes. fully vaccinated because I don't trust people. Right. May um, 1st. May 1st. Yeah. But, um, I just want to go and travel and I'm excited because yes. my partner finally has vacation time. Where, where are you going to go? Where are you going to go first place? Um, my friends want to go to Cozumel in Mexico. Oh, yeah, it's um, beautiful. And then uh, we wanted, to, I was supposed to in March last year, right before everything actually shut oh, down, no. I was supposed to be in Spain on March 9th. Oh, my gosh. Last year, 2020. You had, ca- you had to cancel your trip? Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, I canceled. I was going to go with my aunt and uncle. Oh. Um, Barcelona? we all, yeah, we were going to be in Barcelona. <sighs> you got to go. Through, like, the 16th, oh. so... We're going to go there, and then I was going to um, take uh, my partner to go to Paris, and, like, uh, like we were going to take <gasps> a train. You went by yourself. Yeah, I went by myself, which was fun and traumatic, but it's, like, one of the best things I ever did. Um, but we were going to take the train from Barcelona to Paris, so we are going to just, because he loves trains, so we are going to go on a train <laughs> and, like, go through the countryside and just kind of hang out. Um, I think we were going to go to, like, Toulouse or something, but... Oh, think that's another thing because I have all these flight credits. Oh yeah, um, that I need to spend because <laughs> um, of all the flights that got transferred. But I just I I never really got a chance to travel because I didn't have money and at work was crazy. So now I think I'll have a little bit. I have a little bit more money and a little bit more time. So mm-hmm. you're looking I guess forward to traveling. Yeah. yeah. So Ray, what are you looking forward to? I'm in the same boat as Savannah. I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna really be going to anything big until 2021. 
Um, and I really am like... We are in 2022. I mean, 2022. Oh, my God. Ah! <laughs> oh, my God. Ugh. 2022. I will not be doing anything until 2022. Um, and after all, you know, everyone's vaccinated. I just think I need to, like, ease into it, too. Like, yeah. it, it's like the culture shock from being, like, alone at home all day to, like, being, like, in a in crowd. crowd. I just... People. I never like crowds anyways. I never... I couldn't... It was just never on board. I never like lines and crowds. I'd rather just stay home. So I feel like I'm looking forward to getting to see you guys in person because that's something we've been talking about for months. And it's like... We can, we can do it. I've seen those masks with the zippers on them. We can, but I feel like I really will just feel like comfortable once I'm vaccinated to see people. Um, that's like what I'm really yeah. excited about because I haven't seen a lot of family and I felt really, you know, like only able to FaceTime people for so long. So I feel like that... And, um, I really want to, like, feel kind of safe to go shopping again. It's so dumb and small. I I hate to say it, but I still go shopping. Do you feel safe when you do it? Because I I wear three masks. You wear three masks? (laughs) I went to Ross today. Oh, yeah, you showed (laughs) I got a bunch of underwear because everyone was, like, bullying me about it. We were encouraging you. We were encouraging we were supporting you. Supporting you. your, you know, loving yourself. But yeah, I think those are like Self-care. just the little things. I kind of, well, and I guess too, I want, did you go to the beach? Did you end up going to the beach this week, Norn? Because that's something I've no. wanted to do, but I've still been totally like. You can go. It's outside. You can totally I know, go. but sometimes, I don't know. I, don't know. I just worry Every about people, other beach, people. Nobody wears their mask. Oh, Every yeah. time I've gone, nobody's wearing their mask. But just stay away from them. But then the wind. They're I get so please. angry. I'm an yeah, Aries. I, Me and my partner are both Aries, and we both get so angry when uh, we don't see people with masks. You have to let it go. I can't. I can't. Oh, it, I've been to the beach many times. <laughs> and you, in, yeah. I, you're also closer. For me, it's like a whole fucking trick. So oh, if yeah. I go there and people are going to be jerks and not follow the rules, then it's yeah. just going to be like You don't want to go there and be angry. angry. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think maybe beach and shopping and seeing friends for me. Because I just don't know about traveling for like at least for work for me it's like i'm working until september maybe and then i i should plan a trip but i still feel like it's too soon i don't know yeah i don't Do you know, think like, you'll be traveling by trips then? are gonna happen i don't no. know when they're gonna happen maybe by the end of the year maybe by december i don't know it just depends on what other i think it depends on the like where you're going and how they're treating it because like i don't know like i want to go to mexico but are they gonna be like vaccinated and clear are we even going to be welcome like to europe like are they going to walk and you have to you have to quarantine for two weeks oh yeah yeah like if i have to quarantine like i can't do that so i mean this is all with a grain of salt of this travel fund of like if i'm actually allowed and if dr fauci lets me i will go um I also but. haven't been inside a Target in a while oh that's that's how i went today that's fine well what are you looking forward to norn I am looking forward to going to a bar and <gasps> ordering a beer. That'll be fun just too. Drinking oh it at the bar with a girlfriend. I mean, that would make me happy. With a hot bartender. Maybe. Can we do um, a happy hour? <laughs> also, traveling would be nice. I agree with you, Savannah. Like, I really I just need travel. to get out. I need to leave. But I, I miss just sitting at a bar and drinking a beer. Being out. I guess I, yeah. I do miss restaurants, too, because I feel like that was, like, the main way we saw friends was, like, going to meals. Yeah, I mine miss, was, like, hookah yeah. bar. I miss the hookah bar, which is, like, a COVID crockpot right now that we would go to all the time. And they never id There was literally, like, 15-year-olds smoking. Like, they were they were children. But I was were they this, you? Like, weird. No, <laughs> I, was, I, was old, yeah. I was old enough. I was old enough, for sure. Because it was when it was still, like, 18 was the legal smoking age, because now it's 21. Oh, um, I didn't know that. I didn't know but, that. Good. Yeah, it's Good. it's weird. But um I was there and I was like on this I worked at this weird um it was I had an internship um where I was like this stupid like D list celebrity like talk show, radio show. Um but I was there and I was we ended up talking to these people these guys and he's like, Oh, I'm like a Disney Channel star and I'm like, Cool. Um, do you wanna go on the show that I'm working on? And blah, 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 long story short, this is Noah Centineo. Centineo. Oh, my God, I met him. What? Um, what? So I have his phone number. That? I'm going to try to work it. But, like, I met him when he was, like, before all of this. And what, he was, Disney like, show, what Disney show was he on? He was on um, Allie and AJ, I think. He was on, like, two episodes. He had, like, a three-episode arc. Austin and Allie? 
Austin and Allie, yeah. Austin I, and I Allie. did the main title for that show, and I met all the Connection. cast. Connection. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just so funny that we just met, like, randomly in a hookah bar, and then, like, five years later, he's, like, this crazy celebrity, and I want to see if he's oh doing other works, but I'm too scared. You should. I met him last, no, 2019, when I was working on Masters of the Universe, because he was cast to be He-Man, and, um, yeah, they had, like, cast him, but they hadn't he's even, so nice. like, green, yeah, he was so sweet, he came so in, nice. and, like, first of all, he was, like, wearing, like, all of his workout gear, and he's just, like, this meathead-looking guy, like, so muscular, um, but he was just, like, wow, like, so, like, this is amazing, so sweet yeah, about all the like artwork, twig. like, twig yeah, boy. like, <laughs> he was, like, super, like, and then, like, he was, like, on, this was like the hype for him. It was one of the to all the boys I ever love or whatever had yeah, just yeah, come yeah. out. He was like all of his Netflix, but he I was so movie. sweet and like just like a so kid. Nice. It was nice. You should try it's, calling him. He'd answer. I, so, I should call him. So you I'll guys have met episode. him, but I, but I, the only person I ever met was like on Austin and Alley. We did the main title, and there's like a redhead on that show who plays like the best friend. And I saw him at a Whole Foods, and it was so weird because he's he plays a teenager on you know this Disney show, but he's a full fledged adult, and so he was just buying food for himself. Like at oh, Whole Foods. it's like seeing your teacher out of the classroom. It's like <laughs> what? Oh, so, so weird. So um, Ugh. I'm so glad we have this episode because sometimes when you know when you have Zoom meetings, um, when there's six, that's a lot of people. When there's three. Like, I feel like, you know, you get to know people a little bit more, Mm -hmm. which is nice. And so we got to hear more of Ray's and Savannah's journey, um, (laughs) journey to (laughs) what they're doing now. And I think that's it for Lip, unless you guys want to add something. I'll just add, because I feel like all I've said is how I don't know what I want to do. And I just want to encourage everyone out there. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I don't like know what I was I so. Do. I w- you don't. Uh, I have had a. Ch- I don't know. I'm in like my midlife, my quarter <gasps> life crisis. Oh, ooh. Um, well, I feel like this is that thing. Saturn's return. You know, like right between before you turn thirty is when everyone's like, "Is this the right career for me? Is this the? Is, that it? is this what I'm supposed to be doing?" Yeah, it's like a kind of astrological, astronomical. I can't you know how switching. I feel about astrology. I love it. I don't think you're going to switch your career, though. I mean, she I might become know. a director. We'll she might find some other direction. No. <laughs> but and but anyways, I was just going to say, don't worry about not knowing what you want to do. Like it, Absolutely. like for me, it found me, and I think I'm just stay. I'm just going to stay open, and I encourage yeah. everyone to like. You know, film business is not a linear, for the most part, it's not a linear path. There's a lot of ups and downs and changing things. So just don't expect to have, like, a regular growth pat- growth pattern. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, be okay with not knowing. Be okay with the going with the, going with with the, the flow. adventure. Yeah. Yeah, because every job is just going to lead you to the next thing. And it's all part of the journey. Yeah. That's, that's true. That's it. It's true. And that's for men and women alike. <laughs> <laughs> for more information, follow us on Instagram at ladiesandprodpodcast, or you can email us at ladiesandprodpodcast at gmail.com.